Welcome back. This is lecture six. I want to, before we get started with the material, uh, to just step back for a minute and say, I hope you and yours are doing well. We're kind of all struggling to keep our heads above water these days. And I admire your perseverance in sticking with this course. So hang in there and we will all get through this. Um, moving on to uh, where we left off last time and picking up there then. So we finished off last time, you'll remember, uh, talking about uh, renal blood vessels. And now, uh, if you're following along in your uh, lecture outline, we're to the point where we're going to talk about nephrons. And you might just want to jot down here in your notes that nephrons are the functional units of the kidneys. Nephrons, again, are the functional units of the kidneys. In terms of structure of a nephron, then, you've already seen a lot of this in your lab manual and I will refer you back uh, to look at, not now, but, but at your leisure, um, lab exercise 48, and in particular with regard to nephrons, figure 48.4 in your lab manual should be useful. So structure of a nephron, and notice then each of these nephrons, each of these functional units of a kidney has two parts, and so we have a renal corpuscle, and then we have a renal tubule. Let's start then in terms of the figures by looking on page 777 at figure 2010A. So again, page 777, figure 2010, the A part of the figure, the upper of those two parts of the figure, and I'd like you to take just a minute and locate the glomerulus and locate the surrounding glomerular capsule. And it's not labeled as such, but here, again, just recognize from what we're saying now that a renal corpuscle consists of these two structures. A renal corpuscle, again, as you're seeing on your lecture outline, a renal corpuscle is a glomerulus and the surrounding glomerular capsule or Bowman's capsule. In terms then of the second part of a nephron, in terms of the renal tubule, and again, uh, your, your figure in your lab manual shows this really well. And now we're seeing it again. Uh, we're still on figure 20.10 on page 777. And still, for the moment, up at the top part of the page. So go ahead now, take a minute, and just for review, find the parts of the renal tubule on that A part of the figure. So find what's being called in your lecture notes now the proximal convoluted tubule and realize that sometimes we drop that term convoluted and we just say proximal tubule so i'm fine with either one of those the convoluted is just kind of a reminder that this part of the renal tubule has lots of twists and turns so again follow as well as you can in the uh, a part of the figure, the proximal convoluted tubule, and then recall this in turn leads into a nephron loop or a loop of Henle. And we have then the descending limb coming deeper down into the kidney. And then notice that it hooks a U-turn and now starts moving back up to the surface. And at this point, then, we have the ascending limb of that nephron loop. If you follow the ascending limb, recall, then, 
that it leads into a distal tubule or a distal convoluted tubule. And now if you take a look, still on page 777, still on 2010, but take a look now at the B part of the diagram, the, the lower of those two figures, and notice here we're seeing a nephron with its surrounding paratubular capillary, and we're seeing it kind of diagrammatically as if it were stretched out just to follow this pathway a little bit more easily. Also on that B part of the figure, notice the arrows that are associated with, that are within the nephron and in particular in the renal tubule. And notice then that what we're tracing with those arrows is the flow of this material called fluid in the figure. And here you may wanna jot down that the fluid is called glomerular fluid. And this glomerular fluid then is basically plasma. This glomerular fluid again, this, this filtered fluid, as they're calling it in the figure, this glomerular filtrate or simply filtrate is plasma that has been filtered out of the glomerulus. And basically then it's plasma that's been forced out, that's been pushed out of the glomerulus by blood pressure. So we have this liquid when it's in the glomerulus, we call it blood plasma or simply plasma. When it's forced out of the glomerulus, we call it glomerular filtrate. And just stepping back for a moment now and looking at the big picture in terms of what's going on here, this glomerular filtrate as it moves through the renal tubule, this glomerular filtrate is converted into urine. And we'll of course come back and talk about that in a bit more detail. Back to your lecture outline, and notice now that we're talking about these structures called collecting ducts. And if we just stay on page 777 and take a look again at the B part at the lower of those two uh, diagrams, notice then that each nephron leads into a collecting duct. And then to your lecture outline again given to you is the fact that these collecting ducts in turn uh, merge and empty through those structures we've called renal papillae into the structures we call minor calyces. And so if you have trouble picturing this at the moment, just make a mental note to go back to kidney structure. And again, make sure that you're good with these collecting ducts now and um, what those renal papillae are that they're uh, emptying through and what those minor calyces are uh, that they're dumping into. And that term calyces, by the way, uh, it's just the plural of calyx or calyx, C-A-L-Y-X.
We're talking next, notice now, about cortical nephrons and juxtamedullary nephrons. And notice now, off to the left, in the left-hand margin, your lecture outline is referring you back to page 774. And to figure 20.6 at the top of the page. Take a look then and find a cortical nephron being labeled in figure 20.6 and then also find being shown off to the right a juxta medullary nephron. And to your lecture outline now, let's go ahead and just look at the uh, terms that are filled in for you. So cortical nephrons generally have short loops, short nephron loops, that extend only partway into the renal medulla. So this is the one on the left. Juxtamedullary nephrons, on the other hand, the one on the right, uh, have loops that extend well down into the renal medulla. And then also given to you, uh, there are fewer juxtamedullary nephrons than cortical nephrons, but these juxtamedullary nephrons are very important in regulating water balance. Let's also take a look uh, on that figure showing the cortical and the juxtamedullary nephron. And notice that surrounding the major part of the cortical nephron, we have this paratubular capillary system, which you may recall talking about and seeing, uh, and um, we, we talked about blood flow then through these paratubular capillaries. Notice to the right now, surrounding the majority of the nephron which is a juxtamedullary nephron, we have a similar structure, similar to the paratubular capillary, and labeled off to the left with some lines coming off to the juxtamedullary nephron. Notice now uh, this, uh, this surrounding structure, this capillary structure that surrounds a juxtamedullary nephron in refer is referred to as a vasa recta. And so essentially then when, when blood is flowing into a capillary system, blood that's come through a glomerulus recall already and, and is now going to come into a second capillary system, if the capillary is a paratubular capillary, then blood flow is through one of these paratubular capillaries and if the nephron instead is a juxtamedullary nephron, then the blood flow is through a much longer surrounding structure called a vasa recta. We'll stop here for this lecture and pick it up next time.